Here we're going to talk about a specific property that some molecules have called resonance structures. To investigate this, we're first going to draw the loose structure for carbonate, CO3 2 minus. When looking at this, we realize that the overall molecule has a minus 2 charge, so most likely there are two negatively charged atoms in this molecule. Most likely the oxygens will have the negative charge because they are the most electronegative element. So I'm going to start off by drawing this Lewis structure by giving two of the oxygens a negative charge. We do this by adding an electron to its individual Lewis symbol. So oxygen typically has six valence electrons. We add an electron to it to make a negatively charged oxygen, which has the equivalent of seven valence electrons. So there is a minus two charge. So we make two of the oxygens negatively charged. The carbon is going to be neutral, so it has four valence electron. And then we also have a neutral oxygen, which has six valence electrons. When we combine them together, we get rid of the unpaired electrons by connecting them and turning them into bonds. And here you can see we have the basic structure for carbonate. A carbon as the central atom, singly bonded to two negatively charged oxygens, and then doubly bonded to a neutral oxygen. However, when we did this, there are three oxygens inside of carbonate, and we have arbitrarily given two of the oxygens the negative charge. If we look at it, there is actually three different ways we could have drawn the Lewis structure of carbonate. And we've done this by alternating which ones of the oxygens have the negative charge. So here, this is the neutral oxygen. In the central structure, it's on the bottom. And on the right-hand structure, the double bond and the neutral oxygen are on the right. So we've alternated the negative charges around the central atom. And when you look at it, all three of these are valid Lewis structures in that we've taken care of the bonding, we have octets, we have the two negative charges. And when we have a molecule that has more than one valid Lewis structure, it's said to have a resonance. And in reality, these electrons literally move around the molecule. So the negative charges are not locked into place as we would see if we had an individual Lewis structure. But in fact, these negative charges move from one oxygen to another as if they were on all three of them together. And this creates what we call resonance. Because the charges move, any one of these structures is not truly correct because in reality, resonance structure is a combination of all three of these structures. So if we took all three of them and combined them into one structure, then we would have an accurate representation of the true structure of carbonate. Sometimes they have attempted to draw something like that. What we typically do now is to draw out all of the possible resonance structures and then connect them with a double-headed arrow, which means that the true structure is a combination of them and that the, really the structure is moving in between these three. Because the true structure of carbonate is a combination of these three structures together, the bonds in between carbon and oxygen are actually a mixture of single and double bonds. So you can see that sometimes the double bond is here, here, and here. In reality, if we were to measure the type of bond in between a carbon and an oxygen, it would be part way between single and double bonds. Because the resonance structures are constantly moving, we can't really say that there is a double bond in one single place. The same thing is true with the negative charges. The negative charges actually move between the different resonance structures. So we can't say that the negative charge is specifically located on this oxygen and this oxygen. They're actually located on all the oxygens and they're distributed. So you could say that each oxygen has two thirds of a negative charge. So just remember, even as we draw these out, the negative charges are actually moving inside of this structure. So they literally move around inside of the molecule and the negative charges spread out. And this is actually going to create a certain measure of stability. It's important to be able to identify if a molecule has resonance structures. So one important point we want to make is the difference between these is only in the movement of electrons. So resonance structures only differ in the location of the electrons inside of the Lewis structure. So these are not isomers. Isomers imply a different connection in terms of the atoms. 
when we go from one of these forms to the other, all we've done is move electrons around inside of there. I start considering resonance structures when I see a double bond, and especially something with a, a charge. But really the definition is, is when we have this ambiguity about the location of uh, charges and when we have the possibility of drawing more than one resonance structure.